Hey, everyone. Uh, let's talk about organization and framing. Uh, we're dealing with right now narrative writing. Um, so mostly it's going to be chronological, but there's different things that you can do, and especially when we talk about framing. So an essay needs to be arranged in some fashion, right? It, you just can't throw a bunch of words on there and, and pretend that it's, you're going to be heard. The order of the essay is called the organization, right? So consider this your skeleton, but unlike a skeleton, right? You can shift in time with flashbacks and flash forwards. You can warp the skeleton in a way, but the reader or listener, I should change that to listener, right? That's why you read things out loud. The, but the reader or listener needs to be able to follow the organization, the logic of the organization, right? Sometimes it does not come true, especially if you're watching something that's nonlinear or very confusing. There's five, six different storylines, like the matrix or something. And eventually it all comes together, right? So sometimes this can be very frustrating. Now, if you're writing a short essay of 650 words for a thousand words, it shouldn't be that confusing, right? Uh, but consider, what is your purpose of the essay? What is your topic? All right, so oftentimes the purpose and topic defines like what organization should you use. If it's a narrative essay, you may want to consider the use of a chronological order. All right, so I woke up, this happened to me, and as a result, I wanted to, I want to become a doctor kind of thing. All right, so um, chronological is just sequential, right? This happened, the next thing happened, so that makes sense, right? Many stories, many stories are, are told this way. You can still take, you know, you can still like tell a story and then do a flashback and then come back. They're like little tributaries, like there's the river, then you go off the river a little bit into a little tributary, then you come back to the Mississippi, right? Little, little side diversions and then you come back. Um, little moments of description that you wanted to use and then you come back to the main narrative, right? But you got to think about a frame, all right? It's how you want to wrap the package, wrap the essay. An image that is used at the beginning of the essay comes back at the end. A character returns or a quote that your mom said in the beginning that irritated you is said at the end, but now you understand the quote, all right? Um, you wake up the next day, you begin in the morning, you end at night. It, it's like a circular kind of frame. And it's effective to bundle or wrap the essay or the story, all right? Think about the film Pulp Fiction, if you see it. It's very disturbing, but it's a nonlinear narrative, meaning it doesn't happen in chronological order. It's still a narrative, but it happens at a sequence, right? I think Matrix is like this. There's many stories that are told this way, but it's framed with the holdup at the restaurant, right? It begins at the end and then returns to it at the end. Right? It just keeps it very uh, structured and organized, right? And then you're kind of shocked. It's like, what's going on here, right? And then, and then you come back to then, ah, oh, it all makes sense, right? Think about the stories we have read in class, right? Salvation by Langston Hughes. He promises us that he's I wasn't saved from sin at 13, and then tells us the story in chronological order about what happened to him, and then he's crying at night, right? And he's, he's not bringing us to current day. He's not showing us the adult Langston Hughes. No, he's the adult Langston Hughes writing about when he was 13. And it's all about that. Now, he is the insight of an adult looking at 13. But we never see Langston Hughes outside of that time frame of that one moment in his life. And oftentimes, we want to pick a singular incident to write about, especially when writing narrative, all right? Oftentimes there's a circular power to these stories. Consider the time period you want to cover, right? Uh, oftentimes I say uh, write deep and narrow. Narrow your focus and then go deep, right? Uh, in James Joyce's Ulysses, it's 24 hour period in Dublin. Now the novel is this thick, but it's one day, 24 hours, not two days, not a week, you know, right? Uh, Greg Gatsby, it's the summer of 1922. And that's it. That's the time frame. That's like bookends. Beginning of the summer, end of the summer, and everything that crazy that happens in that book is the summer of 22. The Iliad starts in Medea's race, right? In the middle of things. He doesn't talk about, Homer doesn't talk about the whole 10-year uh, siege of Troy. It's in the ninth year and a few days, really, right? A few days, maybe a week, two at max. I, I finished it, just re did it again. Um, but it's, he starts it in the middle of things, all right? Um, 
And in my story, Destination Known, it all takes place at Westminster Abbey because what happened there was very significant to me. Now, I'm an adult looking back on it, but still it all makes sense. The rose window was cloudy. It was clouded, right? But at the end of the story, the rose window was full of sun because now I know my destination. I want to be a writer. I want to be a teacher. All right. So think about these three things. Time order, which is chronological order. It happens, you know, you wake up, you have lunch, you know, it's the way we go about our day. You can also use space order. So when you're describing someone, a place or a thing, like my description of Dr. Wolf, you can start at the ceiling and go to the floor. You can go to the floor or go to the ceiling. You can come into the door, go clockwise or counterclockwise, however you want to do it. You may want to start, focus on the horizon and then bring us down to the raindrop on a crocus or begin on the raindrop of a, of a, of a crocus and then widen your view all the way out to the, to the horizon, into the universe, all right? So these are very, very effective ways that writers and filmmakers can, you know, we see, you know, we see the earth all the way from space, this little dot, and suddenly we come closer and closer and closer and closer to an infant's mouth crying. It's like, woo, or we go the opposite way. It's all up to you and what you think makes the best impact. And we also have logical order. This is often used in essays like persuasive expository. Like, for instance, what is the most effective example? Well, use it at the end if it's your most effective. You don't want, if you have three weapons, a one, two, three, do the first two, but then use your last as your powerful one. And but we'll, we'll talk about this later, especially when we talk about uh, other types of essays. Patterns include from the general to the specific, the familiar to least familiar, damaging to most damaging. And eventually we'll get to these different types of essays of organization like cause and effect, comparison and contrast, process analysis, problem and solution, division and classification. Like, you know, there are three different types of students at Eastern. And then I, you know, classify each one and I, you know, blah, 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 blah. And I never wrote this, but it could be done, right? Or five or six, whatever you want to classify. Definition, you know, a definition essay. Uh, what is friendship? We're going to write an essay like that. You know, what is, you know, take a term and then write an essay defining it. And you can use any, you, know, you can use narrative in that, but it's a definition essay. Description, of course, we don't know it's a description. And of course, argument and persuasive writing. All right. So hopefully this has helped you understand, you know, having a skeleton is so important, using a framing device um, and making sure the essay is organized. And of course, we'll talk about topic sentences and transitions, but this is thinking about it as a unit. And all those other things are part of how it's held together, right? So you want to think about, you know, the house and how it's going to look. And then when you start writing it, you want to make sure your joists and your beams and your glue and your nails are all in place to keep it together. And that's where we'll talk about transitions and topic sentences and things like that. All right. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.